needs to be done in their lives that they may prosper the more, bringing us the word and being obedient to your assignment. Father, we just thank you, Lord God, for strengthening every person that's here today and listening up through Facebook and any other media process, God, to bless God, to build up. Oh, Lord God, to cause us to be stronger and in you, God. Thank you for your peace and joy. Thank you for your love, most of all. And we just give you the glory, honor, and praise. Have your way in this place today. Yes. Remove anything that may be a hindrance. Oh, God, that you may freely move, Holy Spirit, in this place. And we give you all the glory, the honor, and praise in Jesus' name. Come on again, God, a hand clap of praise. Amen. As the praise team comes forth. Amen. Don't stop Amen. praising him. Hallelujah. 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 We thank you, God, Hallelujah. for being holy, yeah. for being righteous, yeah. for being so faithful to us. And y'all, he has been faithful, right? Because we are here in the land of the living. He's been faithful. As 
Hallelujah. As we made it through another year. Hallelujah. There's greater things that's going to take place. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We exalt you, Lord. We glorify you, Jesus. We exalt your name and we thank you, oh God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. We glorify you. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. We glorify you. We glorify you. You welcome here. You welcome here. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 H
Worshiping the Lord this morning, we're going to come and worship him in our tithes and our offerings this morning. Amen. Come and giving. Amen. Giving. Hallelujah. What a way to praise the Lord to become the soul into the kingdom of God this morning. There's several ways that you can give, several, several methods. They're on the screen, uh, but I'll read them out to you. Uh, as well, you can give through web, the website, which is www.godseye.org. You can, through, through the uh, web page, you can give through uh, PayPal. You can also give through uh, Giveafly. Giveafly. Amen.com. It's a free app. You can download it uh, and you can give. Uh, another way you can give is Cash App, dollar sign, God's Eye Men. God's Eye Men. And then you can mail it to P.O. Box 20781, Greensboro, North Carolina, 27420. Praise the Lord. Amen. 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 So we just want to pray over your offering that you've given today and just say, uh, we just thank the Lord that we're able to give and that he's increasing and you will receive a hundredfold return. Amen. Amen. Because God is good. Hallelujah. And with that being said, we just say amen. Amen. Now, if all hearts are open and ears ready to receive, we are going to hear from our very own pastor, uh, Yvette Lowe, this morning. Amen. Come on and give God praise for it. Hallelujah. Come on, we come to celebrate God on today. Hallelujah for all that he is and what he has done in our life. We are in our first Sunday of the brand new year. Hallelujah. Someone say how you start the year is going to be how you're going to be ending up the year. Hallelujah. And I'm glad to see you in the house of God. I'm glad to see you with a made up mind that you're saying that this year is going to be the best year of my life. I want to know how many people actually believe that this year is going to be the best year. This year is going to be a great year. Hallelujah. And so that means then that, that you cannot be worried about what's going on around you. Someone say that it's not based on what I see, but it's based on what I don't see. And what you don't see sometimes is God moving behind the scenes in your life. And so I need you right now to say that I'm expecting great things. I mean, come on now. I need you to put that in the atmosphere. In other words, you're prophesying to yourself. You're speaking right now to some of your situations. Situations that probably didn't work out well in 2021, but I need you to speak to it. We still are in this decade of the mouth. So it's up to you as to what you began to speak, what you began to decree and to declare. The Bible says that when you decree and declare a thing, that it shall be established. Hallelujah. And it's not based on my words, but it's based on God backing up his words. Amen. And so that means I'm just giving God back his word. And God's word said to me that my ladder is going to be greater than what was past. Hallelujah. The Bible declares unto me, amen, that God is going to supply all of my needs. I need you to go ahead and put that in the atmosphere. That means, amen, that you're not going to suffer lack. Hallelujah. Come on now. We need to get excited about this 2022 year. Hallelujah. We're claiming that this is the year when I get in line. This is the year where I've got to line up. Hallelujah. I've got to tighten up some stuff. Hallelujah. And sometimes in doing that, it's not going to be pleasant. It's going to cause some pain in some, in some ways. It's going to cause some discomfort in some areas of your life. But nonetheless, I'm grateful that we see this year. Hallelujah. I'm grateful that I see this year. And even on that note, this being a new month, this being the first Sunday 
of January, I want to say happy birthday and happy anniversary to whoever is celebrating in this month of January. And I pray, amen, that God will bless your socks off. Hallelujah. Come on, let's get into the word of God on today. I want to share, amen, actually it's just continuing from our watch night service when we crossed over. Now we did early. How many of you actually sat up until 12 midnight? God bless. Some of y'all did. <laughs> but what we want to do, amen, we want to go to the book, actually, of Amos. That's where it's Amos chapter number three and verse number three. Amos chapter 3 and verse 3. This is our foundational scripture for this year. And our theme again is alignment for my assignment. Amen. Uh, Amos 3 and 3 says these words. Can two walk together except they be agreed? Can two, can husband and wife walk together except they be agreed? Can two people who are in business together be successful except they be agreed? Can you walk with God and not be in agreement with his word? Some will say, I have to agree with what God has spoken. Amen. You have to agree with the word of God. Today I want to talk to you from the topic of keys to living in divine alignment. Keys to living in divine alignment. Let us go before the Lord in prayer. Father, we just want to give your name glory and give you thanksgiving for who you are. Because you are mighty, God. You are the awesome God. You reign in splendor and in excellency. So, Father God, we pray even now on this time that we have come to that of the preaching of your glorious word. I pray now, God, that you will hide me yet behind this podium, podium even now. Pray now, God, that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart will yet be acceptable in thy sight. Touch every Hear every heart, God, that is set to hear and to receive your word. I pray now, God, that it will come forth in clarity and in understanding so that they will know that this word is able to change their lives from this day forward if they only believe. So, God, increase their faith even now so that this word may become alive and active yet in them. This is our prayer in Jesus' name, and I need you to go ahead and say amen. 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 Today, again, we want to talk about keys to living in divine alignment. Keys to living in divine alignment. I know on Friday night, I, I kind of started this, and I said that I, I wasn't going to be able to finish, amen, uh, because I, I, I want to, again, give you what does alignment mean? What is the meaning of alignment? And alignment has to do when um, um, there is a correction that is being applied. So it is the correct position of different components relative to one another so that they are able to perform properly. Now, most of the time, there is some standard uh, that they are using in order to gauge whether they are in alignment or out of alignment. And these standards or these specifications then um, that is given, it is so that uh, whatever that is being corrected is at its optimal potential. In other words, it is being optimized in order to maximize its performance. How many, after a while, have experienced even your car begin to drift? 
You may think that you're going straight for a moment, amen. Uh, uh, if you hold that steering wheel straight, uh, uh, you will find that your car will either pull to the left or your car will pull to the right. Uh, and sometimes when we get our vehicles out of alignment, it is because we probably have ran over some potholes. Uh, I know I, I have, and we knocked our car out of alignment. Uh, it could be because even this alignment, it is causing an unnecessary wearing upon our tires. Have anyone experienced, you know, anyone had to take your car into shop uh, for a front wheel or a, a alignment? Amen. Amen. So you think you're going straight, amen, but you're drifting, and there is something that is causing you to be pulled in another direction. How many can say that we've experienced some bumps in our journey? Not just bumps in the road, but we experienced bumps even on this journey. Amen. We, we, we had some potholes that we've had to endure. Sometimes we run up on the curb, causing us to be out of alignment. And therefore, we stand in need of being corrected according to our maker. Amen. Just like your car has to be uh, aligned according to its make and according to its model, its, its industry standards, in order to ensure that you are traveling this straight and true line without pulling to one side. Our maker God sometimes have to bring us into alignment so that we are able to travel the straight and narrow way. So that we will not be venturing to the left nor to the right hand. Amen? Amen. And so forth, you know, um, um, what the mechanic may do is they began to adjust your wheels. You know, uh, uh, the wheels, uh, uh, they, they may be at an angle. Uh, uh, so they be adjusting the wheels to each other. Not only the wheels to each other, but they make sure that your wheels is also in line with the car itself. And now what I found out is that not all vehicles are easily adjustable. And not all cars are able to be fully adjustable either. Some may require some type of special market kit in order to help in this process. So when something is not in alignment, then it is misalignment. I need you to say misalignment. When are we out of misalignment? We get ourselves out of misalignment when we go against the purpose of God. We find ourselves out of alignment when we go against the plan of God. I, hallelujah. How many of you, amen, uh, 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 say for even your, your children, your children can get out of line when they fail to do what we have asked of them as parents. Our children get out of line when they're no longer walking into the purpose of which we have directed in order for our families to work smoothly. Anybody have some kids like that? Uh-huh. Yeah, uh-huh. Uh, uh, so there is a wrong alignment. When we find ourselves in a type of wrong alignment, we find ourselves to be easily worn out. Uh, you become easily worn out from your associations. You find yourself easily worn out when it feels as though that you're putting in more to a relationship than what you're receiving. Someone said that sometimes, amen, relationship will take you on a rough ride, and it will continue to cause misalignment. Misalignments are also caused by our lusts. It's caused by our appetites. Misalignment is caused by what is that thing that brings you amusement. And this is how we have an affinity to the spirit of this world. Uh, your flesh will also cause you to be misaligned. You know our flesh can get us in trouble. Hallelujah. You know how we sin and we sin against God. We, we get ourselves out of alignment sometimes because of our actions, whether they are good, bad, or whether we're trying, amen, to repay someone. Uh, you find yourself in misalignment also because of the devil. Because you surrender to him, you submit to him instead of surrendering and submitting unto God. 
Here's what I find that sometimes we do when we find ourselves not working properly, when we find ourselves in this type of uh, being misaligned, is that we blame other people. When something is not working, it's either to point the finger. It's easy to say that it's not me, but it's someone else. Hallelujah. But somebody say, sometimes it is me. Amen. Sometimes it is you. Amen. That will cause your life to not to be working correctly, as well as outside forces. Now, if these outside forces continue to perpetuate in your life, they will continue to cause you to steal. They're going to continue to cause you to move, even though it is leading you away from God's best for your life. Now, how many of you say, I want the best of what God has for me? Amen. Hallelujah. I want God's best. I don't, I don't want any leftovers. And in 2022, amen, you don't need any leftovers. You don't need any residue from 2021 that was bad. Amen. You don't need any residue from 2021, amen, that brought you havoc. You don't need anything from 2021 that disturbed your peace. Yes. Being in alignment with God. Now here's something that I started last year. Uh, I, I, I saw this, this, this infomercial of, about um, of going to a place called the joint. So pastors started going to this place called the joint. And in this place called the joint, I go in and get my body aligned. Amen. Because there are sometimes, amen, when, when I have certain pains, you know, in my in my back, in, in my neck, my knees, amen, it's like everywhere. So I go and I get my body adjusted. And, and, and I found out that sometimes during these adjustments, amen, even though it is to bring relief, it sometimes is uncomfortable when they adjust my back. Is sometimes uncomfortable when they want to adjust my neck and work on my shoulders. Amen. But I find that when I hear that pop sound, that 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 pop sound, <laughs> I want y'all to know that popping sound means something that's been released. And I want you to know that there are some things that need to be released from you. Because some of these things that you're holding on to, some of these things that we've attached ourselves to, is causing you to be out of line. And you need to go ahead and pop, cut the cord, amen, so that you can get the release in what you need. Stop allowing yourself to be misaligned because of distractions. Stop allowing yourself to be misaligned because of those individuals around you. Some things in 2022 you need to go ahead and separate yourself from. Question yourself. What is it that you need to distance yourself? yourself from? What is it that you need to separate yourself from? If it's not added to you, you need to delete it from your life. Hallelujah. Certain things should not have followed you into 2022. If it is, it's going to continue to stunt your growth. And we have already stated on Friday night, amen, that when you are in alignment and agreement with God, there should be productivity. There should be some growing. There should be some increasing. There should be some expansion when you are in alignment with God, amen? So as I'm going to maximize my potential. Aligning yourself means you're putting yourself in position to be maximized. You're putting yourself in position so that you can have your destiny not be empty, but be fulfilled. How many of you ready to fulfill destiny? Hallelujah. How many of you ready to fulfill your destiny? Hallelujah. To be the person that God has called yeah. you to be yeah. in this 2022 year. Yeah. I have told you before, this is the year that God wants to add to you. Not only add to you, but God wants to multiply. Yes, 
God wants to accelerate some things in your life in 2022. But it's not going to happen until you first align yourself with God. How can two walk together except they be agreed? How can you walk with Pastor Lowe except you be agreed? How can you walk with other leadership except you be agreed? It's not just about lining yourself up. Anybody can go in and say, I'm going to align myself with something. In other words, I'm going to support it. You can support something, but you're not agreeing. You're not agreeing because you still have your own opinion. You still have your own thoughts about it. You still want to do it your way because you think your way is the best way. But you have to agree with the word of God. You have to agree. Hallelujah. Let's look at some keys. What are some keys? What are some things that we can look at and so that we can put ourselves in alignment with God? Key number one is you have to trust in God. That's your first key. You have to trust in God. According to Proverbs 3 and verse number 5. Let's get that. Proverbs 3 and verse number 5. Let me find it. We all know it. But I want you to really know it. Proverbs 3. And verse 5 says, trust in who? Trust in the Lord. Not in mama, not in daddy. Amen. Amen. But you are to trust in the Lord with all. Someone say all. All. All of your heart and lean not unto your own understanding. You don't know everything. But it says, in all of your ways, to acknowledge him. Now, if you acknowledge him, he's going to do something for you. He's going to direct thy paths. Another thing that we can associate with alignment is that of guidance. If you align yourself, God is going to guide you. And when God guides you, when you allow him to direct your path, when you allow God to lead you, listen, he's not going to lead you just anywhere. He's going to lead you and lead you into a safe place. He's going to lead you into a wealthy place. He's going to lead you, even as Psalms 23, by the rivers of living water. So that when you get yourself planted, you're going to be springing up. Amen. Your leaves are going to be green. Whatever you do, whatever you put your hands to do, it shall prosper. Only if you trust in the Lord. Not only, only trusting in him, but you have to. To know that God's plan is always bigger. God's plan is always going to give you bigger and better victories. Now we talk about how we are victorious. We talk about how we are winners. But I want you to know there is on a different level of when I do something on my own. Versus when I let God do that thing. Because when God does that thing. Someone say hallelujah. It's going to be big. It's going to be big. Hallelujah. So God's plan is always bigger. God's plan is always better. Hallelujah. It's going to give you greater victories. It's going to give you better rewards. It's going to give you better blessings. It's going to give you promise after promise. Amen. We know Jeremiah 29 and verse 11. God said, I know the plans that I have for you. 
I know, amen, what I'm thinking, what I'm thinking towards you, what I'm thinking towards you, Sister Tina, what I'm thinking towards you, Brother Frank, amen, is a plan not to hurt you, it's a plan not to harm you, but I want to make it, amen, so that others are going to look at you, amen, and even as the word of God says, they're going to start envying you because of what I've done. Hallelujah. God wants to make you his good pleasure. Not just say that for you to, but, but he wants to make you his good pleasure so that others will see what God is able to do. Amen. God wants to show himself mighty. God wants to show himself strong in the lives of his believers. Turn right quick to the book of Deuteronomy chapter 5. And verse number 33. This is the last verse concerning trusting in God and knowing his plan, which is our first key. Five, did I say what, 33? And it says, ye shall walk in all the ways which the Lord your God hath commanded you. And when you walk in the ways that God has commanded you, here's what you're going to do. You're going to live. Hallelujah. How, how many of you said, I'm, I'm going to live? I, I, I'm going to live. Hallelujah. I shall live and not die. And I'm going to see and declare the works of the Lord. Listen, that ye, let me start over again. Ye shall walk in all the ways which the Lord your God hath commanded you. That ye may live. Go ahead and put your name in there. That event may live. And that it may be well with the event. That event may prolong your days in the land which I shall possess. Hallelujah. So what's that time? It's time for us to start possessing. It's time for us, amen, to claim some things. Long life and possessions. Hallelujah. God didn't say you can't have those things. God's not against his people prospering. God is not against his people, amen, being blessed in the city and blessed in the field. We say it, but do you believe it? Do you want it? Then we have to align ourselves with what the word of God is showing unto us. Key number one is trust in the Lord and know his plan. Y'all ready for key number two? Key number two, God shared that you have to renew your mind. You have to re renew your mind. Come on, we know Romans 12. Romans 12. And look at verse number two. Verse 12, number two. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye what? Huh, transformed. By the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So there has to be then an adjustment, hallelujah, in your thinking. God wants to change your thinking. You can't think in the box anymore. You can't think the same way that you thought last year. Someone say God is about to do a factory reset in your mind. God is about to do a factory reset so he can bring your mind into alignment. And when God brings your mind back into alignment, guess what? Some of those bad habits that you have, listen, they're going to be replaced with good habits. Some of that bad talk that you have is going to be Amen. replaced. You're going to now talk sweet. Amen. You're now going to talk kind to, to other people. Amen. Amen. We have to be careful because it is our thought life. You become what your thought life is. Do you hear me? Your thought life becomes who you are. Even according to Proverbs 23 and verse 7, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. You know, I read somewhere where they say that within a day that we can have some 70,000 thoughts or more. 
That's a whole lot of thinking y'all doing it. I want to know what you're thinking about. That you have 70,000 thoughts or more a day. It's time for you to really think about what you're thinking about. Yeah. Our thinking now needs to be done on purpose. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. So it is your thought life then that creates your reality. It's your thought life that creates, amen, what you experience today. If I look at your thought life, amen, I can see who you really are. So your thought life then is something that will mold how you view things. Your thought life, amen, it, it, it molds and it shapes what is around you. Isn't that powerful, y'all? Yeah. Your thoughts alone, that is something that is powerful. And if it is that powerful, don't you think it is worth to be alive? Not with your own thoughts, but align your thoughts with the thoughts of God. Amen. How can I do that? Simply agree with God. Amen. Simply by being in harmony with God. Isaiah 55. Isaiah 55. Aligning ourselves with God. Isaiah 55. Look at verse 6. Through verse 9. Verse 6 through verse number 9. And listen, it says here in verse number 6. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his ways. And the unrighteous man his thoughts. And let him return unto the Lord. And he will have mercy on him. And to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. Here it is. Here it is. For my thoughts are not your thoughts. Neither are my ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. So I'm going to say, renew my mind. Renew my mind. You have to renew your mind. Renew your mind so that you will begin to know the word of God. And when you know the word of God, you will become more like him. That is God's desire for us to become more and more like him. He wants to see us in his image. He wants to see our talk become like how he talks. Our walk to become like he walked. If we, according to this Isaiah 55 verses 6 through 9, is seek God first. Seeking God first means you have to have a goal. You have to be goal-oriented if you're seeking God first. And then, according to the same scripture, the same text here in Isaiah 55, seeking God first, you also have to pray. When you pray, what are you asking God for? Asking God, God, make me more like you. God, take what out, out of me, what should not be in me. Hmm. And then you need to stop limiting yourself and stop limiting God. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on, let's, let's go. Third key. This is our third and final key. Third and, and final key. The third key is knowing God has given you the power to overcome. You have to know that God has given you power to overcome. 1 John chapter 5 and verse 4 says, For whatever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world, even our faith. I need you to talk to yourself again and say, I am victorious. Come on, talk to yourself again and say, I am victorious. Come on, I am more than a conqueror. Am than Hallelujah. Conqueror. And so what this verse is actually saying in, in two words, 
we win. How many winners we have in here today? Hallelujah. We're going to win. You're going to win. You're going to see victory after victory in 2022. Amen. I don't care, amen, what's staring you in the face that you think you cannot get over. You need to look at that thing and say, I am a conqueror. I can do all things through Christ, which gives me the strength. So when you are in alignment with God, you are going to see the miracle working power of God. When you are in alignment with God, you're going to see how God works. You're going to see how God is going to move. Hallelujah. Let me give you an example. An example of someone aligning themselves with God is the servant by the name of David. How many remember when David, amen, amen, uh, uh, was being anointed, amen, by the prophet, amen? And then as he was anointing him, amen, uh, uh, be, be, because David was not the one that people thought was going to be the king. He wasn't the one that, amen, that Jesse and his brothers thought that the oil was going to flow upon. But someone say, I'm sorry, but the anointing that is on my life, there's an anointing that is on my life. Hallelujah. And it's not because of what you see, but it's because of what God saw on the inside of me. Hallelujah. It's the anointing on my life. David, amen, after he was anointed, he wasn't king right away. David went and back to what he was doing, being the shepherd boy in his father's field. The Bible tells us, amen, that David, amen, went into the, the, the region where there was this giant by the name of Goliath who was taunting the people of God. Hallelujah. David brought some food. David was an Uber back in the day. <laughs> Bringing y'all some food. I'm, I'm, I'm coming to bring my, my, my brothers some food because they're in this battle. They're, they're in this war with the Philistines. Amen. And the Bible tells us, amen, that, that, that his brothers wanted David to align with them. But David said, uh, uh that's not who I am. Uh, and when it got time to Saul, Saul wanted David to align with him. Saul tried to put David in his equipment. Saul tried to give David his sword. Saul tried to give David his armor, but it was not who David was. Amen. David had to become who he was. David had to be comfortable in who God had designed him to be. David had to be comfortable in his own uniqueness. He had to say, God, you made me. God, you strengthened me. God, you showed me something while I was in that field. You showed me that the strength is in you. And because the strength was in God, the Bible tells us that David took five stones. He took what he knew. He took the five stones. He took his slingshot. And let me tell you, it didn't take five stones. It only took one in order to kill the giant by the name of David. I mean, the, by the name of Goliath. We see that when David aligned himself with God, David saw the power of God move in his life. When David aligned with God, David saw a giant fall before him. I'm letting you know when you align yourself with God, you're going to see giants fall in front of you. And it's going to be by the weapon that you already have in your hand. Learn how to use your weapons. Our weapons are mighty. They are not carnal. The Bible says they are mighty through the pulling down of whatever stronghold that's on your life. 2022 is a time we're going to release. Those strongholds are going to be coming down. Those strongholds are going to be breaking. Those strongholds will no longer have a yoke upon you. Hallelujah. David aligned himself with God. Elijah aligned himself with God. When Elijah aligned himself with God, he was there with some prophets of Baal. 
who was calling on God to light a fire on the altar. Elijah watched him cry out to God, to their God. Light this fire. Even Elijah, they say, he somewhat started being sarcastic with them. Maybe your God is asleep. Aren't you glad we got a God who never sleep and never slumber? Amen. The Bible said that when Elijah aligned himself with God in prayer, hallelujah, that God light put fire on the altar. And here's the catch. The altar had a trench of water around it. And it also caught on fire. Hallelujah. How many of you ready to see God catch some things on fire that you caught? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm ready to see the fire of God. Hallelujah. Come upon the saints of God. Hallelujah. That will cause you to do something. Hallelujah. That will cause some things to be burned yet off of your life. And when it's burned, it's never going to come back again. You're going to be like the Hebrew boys in the midst of the fire furnace. You might have been in the fire, amen, but you're coming out and you're not smelling like smoke. Hallelujah. Someone say, if anything's going to burn, let the Holy Ghost power burn. Hallelujah. Let the Holy Ghost power burn on the inside of the people of God. You need to catch on fire for God. Come on, you get excited, you get on fire about everything else. Why not catch on fire for the one who is able to change your life? The one who is able, amen, to heal your body. The one who is able to save your family. Catch on fire. Watch God move in your life. Why? There are benefits. There are benefits when you align yourself with God. Do you hear me? I said there are benefits when you align yourself with God. Is this all right? When you align yourself with God. I want to show you in scripture. Because I don't want you to just believe me. Take my word. I want you to see it for yourself. I want you to be able to go back and, and read these scriptures. So you can get them down on the inside of your heart. Hallelujah. Because when you are aligned, it's going to make things easy for you. Hallelujah. Right? It's going to make things easy. Look at it. Look at it. Psalms 1. Psalms 1. Blessed. <laughs> Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. So now, hallelujah. Who, who you walking with? <laughs> who you walking with? Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor seateth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. But he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water, which bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither. And whatever soul ever he doeth shall prosper. Someone say, it's my due season. <laughs> Come on, it's, it's, it's my due season. <laughs> Y'all know how a pregnant woman, they, after a while, they, they just say, I'm due. I'm due. <laughs> oh, Sister Monica, you do. <laughs> Sister Mary, you do. <laughs> Apostle Major, you do. Prophet Spencer, you do. <laughs> Y'all need to start saying, I'm due. <laughs> it is due season. Hallelujah. He's going to bring forth fruit. <laughs> His leaf shall not wither. And whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. 
<laughs> David had five stones, <laughs> but only used one. Elijah only prayed one time and fire came down. <laughs> Someone say, God, order my steps. <laughs> order my steps. Y'all remember that song, Order My Steps? Order my steps. What is it? In your word, dear Lord, you lead me, guide me. Every day, what is it? Send your anointing. Father, I pray. Order my steps in your mind. Order my steps in your word. Hallelujah. Samuel, another example, had to align himself with God. Samuel was rather a young at this particular time. Really didn't understand the voice of God. But he had to align himself to be in position to hear the voice of God. Some of you, it's going to seem like God is chasing you down. He really is. He is chasing you down. He wants you to be here. Not just saying there's a new year, new you. But he really wants you to be here. Because we know if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature, a new creation. Old things are passed away, and behold, all things become new. I said it on Friday. God wants a yes. Amen. This is what Samuel gave God. Samuel gave God a yes. Here I am, Lord. Speak, Lord. Your servant is listening. He gave him a yes. God wants a yes from you. Jesus gave God a yes. Nevertheless, he said, not my will, but thy will be done. Even from these examples, you can see that there is power in alignment. There is power when you agree with God. Yes. How many of you were truly ready to give God a yes? yes. Hallelujah. Hmm. Really ready to give God a yes. Yes, yielding everything to the Savior. Yielding everything to the Savior. Whatever you're trying to hold on to, it's time to let that go. Yes. And give God a yes. I told you on Friday, you may expect success, but Yahweh expects surrender. Yes. There's an exchange then that's going yes. on. Yes. 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 Amen? Amen? So listen, if you're ready for alignment, listen. If you're ready for alignment, you need to get ready to be shaken. Do you hear me? And if you're ready for that, yes, get ready for shaking. How many of you ready for a shaking. Hallelujah. God Hallelujah. wants to do something in the lives of his people. Yes. Now, this shaking is not to bring an alarm. You know how the earthquakes come and it shakes and, and people get scared off of that, right? But this shaking is to bring you into alignment with your destiny. Yes. This shaking is to bring you to alignment with your purpose. This shaking is to bring a realignment into your life so that you can live again. We just saw that scripture. Whatever God does, guess what? God does it intentionally. He doesn't make any mistakes in anything. Are you really, really ready to line up with God? Because when you line up with God, you have to line up with his will. You have to line up with his purpose. He has given every one of you a purpose. And you have a purpose for a purpose. Therefore, in whatever you do, you have to do it on purpose. What does that simply mean? You need to give God your best. If you are a leader, you need to lead on purpose. Amen. If God has called you to be a leader, you need to lead on purpose. If God has called you to serve, you need to serve on purpose. If God has called you to be a teacher, you need to do what? You need to teach on purpose. If God calls you to be uh, uh, the best employer, guess what? 
You need to be the best employer on purpose. Amen. If he calls you to sing, do what? Sing on purpose. He calls you to do the usher, usher on purpose. In other words, be the best. Give God your very best. Don't come to God and you're tired. Don't come to God, amen, and your heart ain't in it. Don't come to God and you feel some type of way. Don't come to God like you're going to come to whoever else. We show up on our job, right? So let's show up to God and be ready. Yes. Amen. We, we are ready. Hallelujah. So when you recognize and accept that thing, when you can walk in that purpose, guess what? Your life will then be an impact on others and in others. None of this is foreseeable without you aligning yourself with God. You're not going to see this if you don't agree with God. So we have to walk with God. Yeah. Not only walking with God, but listen, even as as as, as Adam did, and we're gonna talk about this later, Enoch. The Bible says that they they walked yeah. with God. Adam talked with God. Yeah. You gotta walk with him. You gotta talk to him. That's what we we learn how to pray to God. Yeah. And when you begin to bring all these things into alignment, guess what? Hallelujah. We can rejoice because we can declare that it's coming back into place. Yeah, yeah. Do you hear me? Yeah. It's coming back into place. Whatever has been out of alignment, listen, it's coming back into place. Yeah. Maybe it's you. You can say, I'm coming back into place. So if that's you, guess what? There's going to be a good shaking that's going to be taking place in your life. You remember when Ezekiel was in the Valley of Dry Bones, there was a shaking. Hallelujah. And it assembled all of the bones back together again. Everything that was dry, everything that they thought was brittle. Amen. Everything was just so discombobulated. Everything was scattered. Hallelujah. Didn't know how to match up with what, but the shaking caused something to happen. Amen. It caused the four winds to start to blow and it comes to, together and to align everything back into right alignment. I'm coming back into place. It's coming back into place. The shaking that is coming is coming to bring your heart back to God. The shaking that is coming is coming to bring, amen, you back to the heart of worship. The shaking that is about to take place is going to bring your heart back into that of servanthood. You're going to love God again in this shaking. You're going to respond to God differently in this shaking. Yes, some things may have to be shaken off of you, but listen, God will never take away from you and not give you something back to replace it. So you need to start to say right now in this 2022, from this day forward, some things are going to be coming back into place. Hallelujah. Some of you need to get excited because you say from this day forward, my health will align. From this day forward, my body is going to be alive. From this day forward, every cell in my body, every organ in my body, every tissue in my body is coming back into alignment. It's coming back into place how God designed it. From this day forward, my mind will be alive. My thoughts are coming back into alignment. You're going to be able to make better decisions than what you made in the past. No more regrets. No more regrets. God is going to be shaking some things and is coming back into place. From this day forward, your mouth will be alive. Hallelujah. I'm going to change the way that I talk. Amen. My talk is going to agree with the word of God. The word of God. Hallelujah. The word of God. It is the truth of the word. The word of God will make you free. The word of God will change your life. I'm going to start talking the word of God because my heart and my mouth will become in a 
alignment and to agreement. From this day forward, my finances are going to align. I will never have another broke day in my life. I will learn the principle of giving. I will learn the principle of tithing. I'm going to learn the principle of sowing and of reaping. I'm going to learn, hallelujah, how to save money instead of going to the store and spending every time I get a paycheck. I'm going to learn how to consult God before I spend another dime. Ah, from this day forward, my relationships will align. My family is going to align with God. As for me and my house, we are going to serve the Lord. I'm believing my whole entire household will be saved. I'm going to make the right connections with people. I'm going to align myself with people who have vision. I'm going to align myself with people who have faith. Yeah. I'm tired of people dragging me down and holding me back. Yeah. Hallelujah. You need to change what you align to. You need to change some of your associations. From this day forward, my spirit man will be alive. I'm going to align myself to Jesus. I'm going to align myself with God's word. I'm going to align myself to his authority. I'm going to align myself with his kingdom. Yeah. And with his kingdom, he said the kingdom of God suffered violence, but the violent are going to take some things back. Hallelujah. So listen, if you're ready to take some things back, Hallelujah, 2022. Come on, I need you to go ahead and start right now. Get excited. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because some things are going to start shaking. Come on, I need you to start shaking right now. Shaking right now. Go ahead, start, start shaking right now. Hallelujah. And when you shake the things off, hallelujah, God is going to cause the shaking that is going to bring alignment into all of those things. Hallelujah. Alignment in your health. Alignment in your body. Alignment in your soul. Alignment in your spiritual being. God is concerned about you financially, emotionally, spiritually. He's concerned. Hallelujah. God in his word, he says this. He says this. He said, if you abide in me, I'm crazy, and I in you. He says that as the branch beareth fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can you, except you abide in me. In verse 5, he says, I am the vine. You are the branches. Amen. He that abideth in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. Yes. For without me, you can do nothing. If a man abideth not in me, he is cast forth as a branch yes. and is withered. And men gather them and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. If ye abide in me, and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. Herein is my Father glorified, that ye bear much fruit, so shall ye be my disciples. God is calling. God is calling. And he is calling for the sinner. He is calling for the unbeliever. He is calling for those who are not saved, even on this first Sunday, January 2022. This can be the greatest day of your life when you make Jesus your choice. It is a personal decision that all of us have to make. Hmm, that we have to say, what state Am I, is my heart in? The question of where would I spend eternity even if I die tonight? If you are even unsure about that place, whether it's going to be hell or whether it's going to be heaven, I want you to be sure that you have a place 
in heaven where we can enjoy the eternity with God and with Jesus. How do I make that assurance? That assurance is made by a confession. According to Romans 10, 9, 10, it says, If thou shalt confess the Lord Jesus with thy mouth and believe him within thy heart, that thou shalt be saved. With the mouth, confession is made. With the heart, you have done believing. And if you believe in that, you believe that God sent his son to die for your sins, that he died, that he was buried, that he rose again. If you believe that, that's all you have to do is just believe it and confess it. And the Bible says that you are saved. If you desire Christ on today, I want to extend an opportunity for you. Whether you have backslidden from God, that just means, amen, you, you change how you felt about God at one point. God gives you an opportunity to come back to him. Matter of fact, he said, my marriage is backsliding. God never wants or did not design hell for you. It was designed for the devil and his angels, but not for you. So today is an opportunity for you to seal eternity yet with Jesus in heaven. If there is one on today, you can come. You can come. You can come. Even if you are watching via Facebook on today, I just want you to just type in the chat. That's me. That's me. That's me. And listen, after this, someone will be in touch with you. We want to be able to, to pray with you on today. If everyone here is good, if everyone is safe in Jesus, let us just do a corporate prayer on today. Father, we bless your name. We thank you for your word even on today. Pray now, God, that these hearts have been captured uh, yet by your word. Pray now, God, that you will seal this word yet within them. I pray now, God, that even on this week, God, that you will make yourself known unto them. Let them know, God, that they are new in you. Give them a freedom that only you can do. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. We thank you all. Listen, let us prepare ourselves. We're going on this first Sunday to partake of Holy Communion um, on this first Sunday um, of the year uh, where we remember the sacrifice of Jesus we remember, amen, we reflect upon that um, and what he has done in order to give us life. And the Bible says that life more abundantly. So even as Elder Lowe is um, serving uh, the people, I want to read unto you uh, 1 Corinthians chapter number 11 and verse number 23. Uh, where it says, For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you, this do in remembrance of me. After the same manner, he also took the cup. And when he has supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as oft as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. For let a man examine himself. And so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. Even as the scripture has said, let us take a moment and examine it ourselves. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. Hallelujah. For those of you who are watching Facebook, you can go ahead and briefly, uh, quickly, uh, go ahead and find you some elements that will serve as your uh, communion, as your cup, 
had maybe some crackers that were served as the bread of the body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. But let's take the bread that gives me strength. From day to day. It will never We thank God for these elements of which we have partaken of. The Bible says as often as we do it, we do it in remembrance of him. We remember the sacrifice. We remember the greatest love that was ever shown yet to mankind. When for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. So we thank you now, God, for the shedding of your blood. Because of the shedding of your blood, we speak and we declare healing yet unto our bodies and to our minds. In Jesus' name, let us say amen. Amen, amen and amen. Glory and thanks be unto God. So I want to thank you and you and you and you for coming to God's Eye Ministries on today. Let us not forget uh, that on Tuesday, uh, we will be having Tuesday night teaching uh, via our conference line and also via our Zoom link. So uh, chime in, come on in uh, at 7 p.m. Uh, to experience, amen, our Tuesday night teaching. Also, uh, we will be beginning our corporate fasting on tomorrow. Uh, we will do a 21-day corporate fast uh, starting tomorrow. Uh, so let us uh, be mindful um, that we are fasting. Uh, for those who have uh, medication, you know, please you know, follow your doctor's orders. If you need to eat something, please eat something so that you can uh, take your medication. Amen? Amen. 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 And then um, during our fasting at 6 a.m. in the morning, um, you can dial in our conference line. There is a one number so that you don't have to use a, a code. Dial in that at 6 a.m. in the morning. And we just want to start the day off with uh, with prayer. Shouldn't take no more than 15, 20 minutes, amen, um, in the morning. So we can just start together uh, uh, with prayer for that particular day. Amen? amen? Amen. Thank you all. Amen. As we say, we love you with the love of the Lord. And we also say grace and peace. Amen. God.